send another one? Sure, hit it. I love surprises. So does our audience. Good morning, Anna. What are you doing in my bedroom? Isn't it obvious? Just as well. Oh, nobody knows how to take their clothes off these days. <laughs> no. This isn't bad. You said you couldn't cook. You did. Oh, hi, buddy. I thought you might be back for this. Oh, thanks. Is everything there? Yeah, I grabbed it after Hank carried you out. Oh. Where is it? Oh, yeah, some kind of painting emergency. Listen, could you just give me, please, a double martini on the rocks this time? Oh. Are you sure you can handle it? Oh, darling, haven't you heard? I can handle anything. <laughs> Boy, I can't. I hate to see a beautiful woman drink alone. You want company? I'm sorry that you're here, but hearing you talk about hospital food is like music to my ears. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> I suppose I should be happy to eat anything, considering. You know. Listen, how did uh, how did this accident? How could this happen? Well, I, it it might not have been an accident, exactly. What are you saying, Dad? It must have been a short. Adam says that the circuit panel was sabotaged. Oh, come on. That's Adam's paranoia talking. No. I believe him. But who would do something like that? Are you all right? Is everything okay? Yeah. What happened? What? what? I, I... Haley, what's I wrong? Know. I got a call from Adam. He said to get over here immediately. He said it was a matter of life or death. Jesus. That woman has to be stopped, Jack. I've told you, there is nothing I can do without evidence. Without evidence, I cannot even issue an arrest warrant, Adam. What do you need? What do you need, a body count? My nephew is in that room because Camille Hawkins tried to ele electrocute him. You don't know that. It could have been an accident. An accident? Like Stewart's elevator crash was an accident? Like Mateo and, 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 and Haley's apartment blowing up was an accident? Damn it, Jackson. Someone has targeted my family. Yes. They're going to kill us Adam, one by one. Adam. I want to get to the bottom of this as badly as you do. But without proof, I cannot move on this. Fine, fine. You're just going to leave her out there to plot her next move. Well, well, put her in jail and watch the attack stop. How's that for proof? Adam, are you sure there isn't somebody else, somebody that could be behind this, somebody that you've overlooked? Yeah, yeah, there's so much. Got just the one, Camille's father, Lee Hawkins. Only problem is he's dead. And there's nobody else, no business entities, no, anything like no, that? No, come on, this is much too personal. Camille knows how to rig stunts, she knows lights, she knows, she knows all of it. Believe me, I've seen her handiwork. The only thing she doesn't know how to do is bring her father back from the dead. So that leaves Camille. This is her vendetta. There, now. Isn't this more comfortable than the bar? Well, actually, I was quite comfortable where I was. <laughs> well, but this is much more intimate. Why do we need intimate? I don't remember asking you to join me, did I? No, but I invited myself. You looked upset. And like I say, I hate to see a beautiful woman drink alone. Well, this sounds like more of a problem for you, darling, than it is for me. Oh, come on. Really, I'm harmless. Would you? Come on, just unload a bit. Tell me what's troubling you. You don't paint, do you? Me? <laughs> Well, I've done all kinds of things, but, uh, no, painting was never one of them. Good. What's your name? Lee. John Lee. Well, Mr. Lee, you can call me Marion. And if you buy me another drink, I will bore you with all the tragic details of my life. Oh, come on. What possible tragedy could life bring you? No, life didn't bring me a tragedy. The sole purveyor of my pain can be summed up in two words. Adam Chandler. Adam Chandler. Oh, I know that name. 
Wait, the Adam Chandler? Oh, yes, none other. I'm impressed. You know that guy? Oh, know him. I know the whole clan. And don't be impressed. I want you to get to know them. They are quite unimpressive. Although, they've got a lot of skeletons in their closets, you know? And I know where most of them lie, you know what I mean? Really? Well, then we do have something in common. You know, I'm actually an amateur archaeologist. Skeletons are my thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Lee. Cheers, all right? <laughs> Call me John. John. Adam, as soon as we locate Camille, we will bring her in for questioning. Yeah, well, meantime, check the wiring at the circuit panel out of the cabin. I looked at it. It's been tampered with. You looked at it. You didn't touch anything. Of course I didn't touch anything. I'm not an idiot. It's been hot-wired. Camille's fingerprints will be all over it. Unless, of course, she... Oh, she wore gloves, of course. All right, Adam, I'll tell you what. We'll look into it, but don't get me wrong on this. I don't want you to get any kind of crazy ideas. I am conducting a very careful investigation here, and that means compiling evidence until I'm sure that whoever I arrest, I can prosecute yeah, and convict. You're fine. You're fine. Was, when I was under suspicion, you couldn't wait to, to drop everything and fly down to Pigeon Hollow. And now that my family has been targeted by a demented stalker, you're twiddling your thumbs. And as you will recall, I was in no rush to arrest you either, even though I had Camille Hawkins screaming at me day in and day out to lock you up. So what I want you to do, my friend, sit down, take a breath, shut up, back, and let me do my job. The fact that you can't find her doesn't exactly inspire confidence in me that you can't do your job, Jack. Dad, you are in a hospital. I'll talk to you later, Adam. Find Camille. What are you doing here? Adam, don't be so rude. Uncle Adam. It's all right. I'm sorry, Brooke. This is a private family meeting. Hello, Adam. I was just leaving. No, you weren't. You said you needed a break. Stay as long as you like. Let her go, Stuart. Scott, I'll be by later. Brooke! Don't let Adam chase you off. In case... Anyone in here doesn't realize it yet. This family is under attack from a dangerous psychotic. We have to come up with some kind of a strategy, and now! There's no reason for Brooke to be in this room unless you want to give us pointers on how to shoot Camille in the back. You know, come to think of it, I, I met one of the Chandlers in the hospital. Uh, <clears throat> Haley. She was with her husband, uh... Mateo. What were you doing in the hospital? Petite blonde, right? She, she seemed really sweet. Don't tell me she's not in on this heartache, is she? Oh, no, no, no. She's very nice. I mean, although she has inherited a, a spine of steel from that monster of a father of hers, Adam. I mean, how she avoided inheriting, inheriting his despicable nature, I mean, is a mystery to me. So it's not all the channels. It's just one that's the problem. How could Adam Chandler hurt someone like you? Well, he not only hurt me, he, uh, he ruined my only chance of being happy. How could one man do all that? Oh, darling. Adam Chandler ruins lives at lunch, and then he happily orders his dessert. I mean, that man is a despicable, hideous, deplorable monster who will do and say anything he has to to get what he wants. Adam! Shame on you. Stuart, I'm not judging Brooke. I'm commending her. Rather than sitting on our hands, waiting for Camille to strike again, let's shoot her and have done with it. I didn't plan to shoot Jim Thomason. No, you did it to save your family. Didn't you? It's exactly what I'm trying to do. Dad, the only thing you ever shoot off is your mouth. Brooke, I'm going to get a cup of coffee. I know I could use one. How about you? Thanks. Scott, I'm glad you're feeling better. I'll be back later. Goodbye, Stuart. Stuart Chandler is the kindest and most noble man I've ever had the privilege of knowing. And Stuart is? That's fine. Stuart is Adam's better half, his twin brother. Oh, boy, talk about the yin and the yang. You know, as dark as Adam is, Stuart is light. It's like Adam is the devil and Stuart is an angel. You know, the devil was an angel once. Oh, no, Adam never possessed the qualities that Stuart has. And he never will. Where decency and compassion are concerned, Stuart lucked out in the gene pool. Adam has none at all. Adam, some, sometimes you make me so mad. 
that was so mean, making Brooke feel worse than she already does? That wasn't my intention. Well, she's having a hard enough time as it is. And shooting Camille is a really stupid idea. Only if we get caught. And you know why? Because Camille is innocent, that's why. Oh, Stuart, wake up. Stop acting like a cross between a Pollyanna and an ostrich. Face reality. Don't talk to my dad like that, okay? Your enemies may have gone in on a hit squad to get you. Who do you think landed you in that bed, Scott? Adam! Scott, listen, don't fight. That's not going to solve anything. And you, you, Scott, you're supposed to be resting and, and relaxing. Look, eat, eat. Haley, you, Stuart, we're all at risk. But Camille is not the culprit. And going after her just leaves us wide open to the real danger. Whoever's really responsible for this. You're really stuck on this guy. Well, you know, he, he understands people. Human nature, I mean, he understands me better than anybody ever has, really. And he's just full of wisdom. You know, Adam treats him like he's incapable of making his own decisions. I mean, does Adam have any idea how destructive that is? Sounds like this Adam only thinks about himself. Yeah. Think, Adam. Think. Who comes to mind? Wait, you both believe one person could crash an elevator? Rig Haley and Mateo's apartment to explode? And sabotage the, the, the circuit panel at the cabin? I mean, one person could do all that? One person with know-how? The same person who invaded my house, set up camp in my office building, wired a sound system in my bedroom, and floated through the air 50 feet off the ground. Camille. so nice to listen to me like this. Well, Mary, and I can see why you're drinking alone and feeling sad, but what's Adam Chandler stand to gain by keeping you away from his brother? Control, which is what he lives for. At the expense of his brother's happiness? So what if you two had a little thing? What's the harm in that? A little thing? What Stuart and I had was... Was what? I don't believe this. Could I? I can't. I mean, I thought I was immune. I'm sorry, immune? Are you coming down with something? No, no, I, I'm not sick. It's, it's much worse than that. I, I'm in love. I'm in love with Stuart Chamber. I am deeply and desperately in love with Stuart Chamber. You know, where I come from, love is something to cheer about. You act like you've been drafted into the Foreign Legion. I feel like a POW. But you said Stuart is so great. He is. He's the most wonderful man I've ever met. So what's the rub? The rub is that I can't have him. I can never have him. Oh, come on. Don't ever say never. Doesn't he feel the same way about you? I don't know. I mean, no. I mean, how could he? Because you are terrific. Any man would be happy to have you. They all were. What? Look, I don't deserve Stuart Chandler. Who says? Really, that, that brother of his? Come on, if Stuart is half the man you say he is, I'm sure he feels the same way about you. He does not sound like the love him or leave him type. No, he's not. He's the most marvelous man on the entire planet. I mean, he's an artist and he reads poetry. And One day we had a cup of tea and... He told me I had the smoothest skin in the entire world. And you do. What else did he say? He said that I was like a flower and that he loved flowers. And we were going to go to the botanical gardens together. There, you see? The man's got it just as bad as you. You think so? 
Yeah, I think he's crazy about you. I think he would die if anything happened to you. Dad. Hey, Stuart. How's Scott? Uh, he's doing, doing pretty good. Pretty yeah, good. good. Pretty good. Pretty good. But do you, would you go in there and, and see him? Adam is in there, and he's acting like a complete uh, dog. No, I better not. I, I came looking for Brooke. Uh, Phoebe said she was going to be stopping by. And she did, but Adam chased her away, away already. <sighs> Figures. Uh, Eighth. You used to be a, a private investigator, didn't you? Uh, I mean, you, you, you know all about investigating stuff. Yeah, but I gave up the business. It doesn't pay very well. Oh, well, I was, I was hoping that, that maybe you could help me find out who tried to kill Scott. Somebody tried to kill Scott? <laughs> yeah, or me. I'm not sure which, but anyway, somebody tampered with that circuit box. And Adam, he thinks it's Camille. But I don't, I don't think that's right. And that just makes us sit in ducks for whoever really did it. You think somebody planned that explosion and it was an act of sabotage, like your elevator accident? Yes, yes, yes. And like Mateo and Haley's uh, apartment blowing up? Somebody is, I mean, is after us Chandlers. We've been real lucky so far. Will you help me stop them? Derek, Jack, listen. I want you to send some men out to Stuart Chandler's cabin. I want them to take a look at the generator hookup, see if it seems to have been tampered with, okay? And listen, something else I think we should take a good close look at, too. That elevator accident at the Pine Valley Hospital and the explosion at Haley and Mateo's place. I have a feeling these things are connected. That's right. All right, get back to me, okay? Did Adam put you up to this? Oh, no, no, it's my idea. Good. Because I'd hate to have him find out I'm trying to save his butt. I'd rather keep this just between you and me, okay? Then you'll do it? Sure. I'll do it for you, I'll do it for Haley, and I'll definitely do it for Scott, but I'm afraid that Adam's salvation is strictly by association. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I better get this filled up before Adam calls the governor or something. You go ahead. Yeah. Ah, just the man I've been looking for. Hey, Ma. Jake said you were expecting this. What's uh, this? Something about uh, DNA tests? I've definitely been waiting for this. Oh, it looks official. It is. You going fishing? Wow. Yeah, you. I'll fill you in later. <laughs> you better. I will. <laughs> Whoa! Jack! Jack, no, 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 uh, uh, another piece of the Joy Hawkins mystery, and uh, it doesn't look good for the Chandlers. I think you should hear this before Adam does. All right, we're all assembled. What is this information you wanted to share with us? I'll let Tad explain. Tad, have you been hiding Camille? Dad, let him speak. If this will help stop the attacks on my family, well, now, Adam, that depends on who's doing the attack. Camille Hawkins is doing the attack. Before you start jumping to conclusions, maybe you should hear what I have to say. Fine. Spit it out. Could we please get this over with? I know who's buried in Joy Hawkins' grave. Well, John, I've certainly bent your ear this afternoon. Please allow me to pay this bill. No, 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 no. I enjoy talking with you, Marion. Well, hearing about my sad love life wasn't much you had in mind when you joined me, though, was it? I didn't have anything in mind. I saw a beautiful woman who looked down as all. Well. Yeah, acting like a lovesick teenager. You know, Marion, I got something out of this, too. Did, did you ever meet someone when you felt like you, you really had a connection? Huh? I mean, what might seem like idle chit-chat to someone could be the difference between life and death for someone else. You know, John, you were really far deeper than I realized. But I've got to tell you, if I don't get home right away into my nice warm bed, I'm going to be dead in the morning. Well, the afternoon is young. But you know what? I think, I think bed's a good idea. You look like you could use a nap. Allow me to escort you home. 
Oh, no, no, you've already been so nice already. I... I won't take no for an answer. You know, quite frankly, I don't give a diddly damn who's buried in Joy's grave. Why not? It might just lead you who's ever behind those accidents. Accidents? Don't you mean attempted murder? Adam Camille is not the saboteur. She has been trying to er eradicate my family since day one. And if you don't agree with that, you must be working with her. Why don't you turn down your paranoia for just a hot minute, okay? Camille's not the villain here, and neither am I. Ed's right. You don't have any evidence against Camille. A 23-year-old corpse can't help me find out who's trying to kill my family in 1998. You know what? If I didn't know better, I'd say you were afraid of this report. Which is kind of interesting, because I thought you'd be as anxious as everybody else in this room to find out who's trying to kill your family. I'm anxious. So, uh, let's hear it. Go on. Go on. Go on. Thank you. I don't know if Adam told you or not, but uh, we had the medical school at the University of Western Virginia do some DNA tests on the remains we found in the coffin. This is what they sent back. Uh, tests show beyond any doubt that the remains of the individual submitted for examination couldn't possibly be Joy Hawkins. Blood typing of the corpse compared to the blood sample of Camille Hawkins plus evaluation of the DNA, plus the age of the remains, rule out any possible match. We already know that. Give me a minute. God. How do you do it? Anyway, as to who's really buried in the coffin, I had some suspicions. So I had a lab here at the hospital do a cross match on some Chandler DNA. What? I hate to tell you this, Adam, but if I'm right, the body in that coffin was Lottie Chandler. Lottie? Our sister Lottie? That's ridiculous. But who could have put her in their coffin? Marion, I'm looking forward to get to know you better. Oh, look, this is not an invitation of any kind. I mean, my heart really does belong to Stuart. No, I got it. But my daddy always taught me to get a woman home safely. <laughs> you're a real gentleman, aren't you? <laughs> oh, well, I uh, hope so. And might I say that if your steward, for any reason, decides to pass you by, he is one sorry excuse for a man. Look, I won't hear one word against Stuart. No offense meant, but uh, you're sitting here feeling terrible, and where is he? <sighs> it's just the way the cards fell, okay? Yeah, well, it stinks. These Chandlers think they can walk all over people, treat them like they're property. No, no, just Adam. Stuart is an angel. And I know what it is to love someone deeply and lose them. Who did you lose? My wife. Oh, I'm so sorry. She was the love of my life. She meant everything to me. It must have been a terrible loss for you. Well, but we all have to move on. Right, we all have to move on. Mother, I have been out of my mind worried about you. Oh, darling, darling, I am perfectly fine. I, I have been looking all over town for you. Well, here I am. <laughs> Where are you going? It's no concern of yours, darling. And who is this? Darling, I'll call you tomorrow, no, okay? No, you don't. Liza, don't be rude. Mother, the guy can get lost. If you want to leave, you'll do it over my warm, dead body. I always knew you had straw for brains, Martin, but to come in here and disrespect my sister in the midst of a family crisis it's like not this... not what I'm doing. Poor Lottie's life was difficult enough. Let the poor woman rest in peace. Adam, don't shoot the messenger. All I'm trying to do is relate the test results. Yeah, what I'd like to know is how do they compare Chandler DNA with that of the corpse? I didn't authorize it. Yeah, I didn't think you would. That's why I took the liberty of stealing some of your hair. That's illegal, isn't it? Also, shoot me, all right? The test was run. They confirmed my suspicions. If you don't believe me, you can check out the lab result yourself. I'd like to see it, please. Matches in the 80% range. That's right. It means whoever the unknown deceased was, they had to be closely related to you. 80%. That's well within the sibling relationship category. You don't have any other siblings. Adam, the age of the remains, plus the results from this DNA test, confirmed for me that there's no... Nobody else that body could be but Lottie. 
Who would put poor Lottie into that grave? So, Tad, this is your theory? That the body is Lottie Chandler's? Yeah, I had a hunch. Based on what? Well, when Jack and I were with the sheriff down at Pigeon Hollow, he showed up me a, a schematic of the cemetery where supposedly Joy was buried. Lottie's grave was very nearby. So much for eternal rest. But that's sick. Who would disturb Lottie like that? Who would, who would do that? It's almost like grave robbing. Off the top of my head, I'd say whoever it was was making damn sure they covered up what really happened to Joy Hawkins. But without a body, we don't have anything, right? But to desecrate a grave that way. Exactly. No matter what you think of Camille, she wouldn't do something like that. That's what you think. Adam, she doesn't have it in her. There's only one person mean enough and sick enough to do that. Who? Lee Hawkins, Camille's father. Liza, you do not need to get bent out of shape over this. The gentleman is just seeing me home. To a 12-hour horizontal goodbye? Never. At least, not anymore. You know, I think this is a good time for me to say goodbye. Look, my daughter doesn't mean to be rude. She wasn't. It's just that I don't want to be the cause of any more friction for any families. So why don't you and I, maybe we'll see each other down the road. All right, here, let me give you my card, and you can call me sometime, OK? OK, I will. And nice to meet you. Bye. Bye. Mother, sit down. I cannot believe that you would pick up a scum like that. He's not scum, darling. He's a gentleman who was listening to my problems and offering me solace. Oh, well, now, there's a word for whatever it was he was offering. Liza, why don't you ever give me any credit? Because your morality account is overdrawn. You have no pity for me at all, yes, do you? Yes, I do. Mother, I know that you're hurting, but you'll heal, and, and I'll help you. Oh, you mend broken hearts now? No. It's just that you won't be thinking about how you're hurting, because you'll be too busy thinking about what I'm doing. Darling, I'm not equipped to help you down a WRCW. No, no, no. What I need you for has nothing to do with television. What does it have to do with? Babies. What are you talking about? I'm going to have a baby. So, what do you think? Tonight, we honor Liza Colby and her sizzling performance. Give yourself a high approval rating, don't you? Just look happy. Oh, this is delirious for you. Not maniacal, just happy. <laughs> Make up your mind. <laughs>